back for the month of October. And um, as you know, October is a very important month for employment, especially for people with disabilities. Uh, this year marks the National Disability Awareness Month, uh, the 75th anniversary. It, uh, it is also the 30th year, 30th year anniversary of the American with Disabilities Act of 1990, um, which are two very important milestones. In honor of this, we've been hosting a series of webinars um, related to different employment topics. Um, for today's employment topic, we are going to speak about virtual interviews and some tips for success. Uh, the webinar will consist of a brief video, which is about 17 minutes long, which will provide insight into a mock virtual interview. The video was created by members of our Employment First Business Advisory Committee, um, as well as members from our service provider community and individuals that receive services. After this video, there will be a, also like a brief PowerPoint presentation um, speaking about general tips for virtual interview success. Um, and then after this, um, we're going to open it up to the audience so that you'll be able to ask any questions that you might have in relation to this topic, uh, in relation to the video, or in relation to the presentation that you just saw. Um, and joining us today uh, is also Benjamin Sandoval and Mark Anthony Kempoy. Um, who are members of the Employment First Business Advisory Committee at Westside and are also service providers working with ECF, Exceptional Children's Foundation. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, throughout the webinar, feel free to type into the chat box um, any questions that you might have, and we'll make sure to answer them towards the end of the, the webinar. So with that said, uh, we're going to start off with our first, um, with our video presentation for today. Um. It's coming right up. Here we go. All right. My name is Mark Anthony Campoy from the Exceptional Children Foundation. You may have seen me before on ECF's Exceptional Works YouTube channel. I'm taking my hat off because I'm not the captain of a cruise ship. Well, the video you're about to watch, we are calling the interview, will give you insight into how to present yourself during a virtual interview. Remember to pay close attention to the questions that are asked by the interviewer. How do you answer by the interviewees? And anything else you might find useful on your job search and virtual interview, please enjoy. Hello, Leonard. Thank you for coming to the virtual interview for the stock clerk position here at Sophia's Market. Sophia, the owner, will log on with you shortly to begin your interview. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. It is nice to meet you, Leonard. It's nice to meet you too, Miss Varga. Uh, my name is Sophia and I am the owner here at Sophia's Market and I will be doing the interview with you today. As you know, uh, we are looking for a stock clerk, um, which is the person who would be working with our team to ensure that all of our customers have products available to them that are in a safe and friendly environment. Uh, because of COVID-19, this also means packing groceries for customers that may prefer curbside pickup. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself and why you think you would be good for this position? Yes. Well, number one, I am task oriented. 
and well-organized, well, actually well-organized and task-oriented. I'll focus on main tasks that are number one and priority tasks. And after finishing with the priority tasks, I'll, I'll work on secondary and third priority tasks and finish them. That's wonderful. Um, <clears throat> secondly, could you tell me a little bit about what your schedule uh, might be? Would you prefer working uh, day shifts, night shifts, or do you have a preference? Well, my preference is morning. I am, I have, I'm fresh, I'm ready. I have lots of energy in the morning, but I'll, I'm open to, I'm flexible and open to anything that you need me for, to any kind of scheduling. Great, we, re we really appreciate that flexibility. Um, finally, could you give me a little bit of insight into a, situ into a circumstance where you might have dealt with a, a difficult customer or, or coworker in your past work experience? Yes, I had difficulties in the WMC mailroom with people phoning me and asking me, where's my FedEx package and why isn't it on my desk? So our solution was to print out a signature page, attach that signature page to a clipboard and have all deliveries signed for from then on. Well, that solved our problem. Great, it looks like you really worked as a team. Um, finally, do you, have, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I would like to know what the challenges of the job I'm applying for. What are, what are they like? What are the challenges? Well, especially now because of the uh, COVID-19 safety procedures, I would say that one of the biggest challenges is really uh, making sure that we comply to all the, the safety protocols. For example, here at the market, all of our workers need to wear um, masks at all times. And as you're packing um, the goods, we ask that you also use gloves and there are hand sanitizing stations all throughout the market that we expect you to use, as well as plexiglass stations when you for when you interact with customers at, at the checkout stand. So I would say that for for these times, the most difficult the most challenging part for most of us is getting used to the safety protocols. Yes, these are challenging times. You're right. Um, well, if you don't have any further questions, uh, I, I think I, I have enough and I will get back to you within the, the next 24 hours and let you know either way, but it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your interest in working at Sophia's. Well, Ms. Berger, thank you for spending quality time with me and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Hi, Mobot, it's Sandra, how are you? I'm doing good, and you? I'm doing good. Are you ready for your interview today? Yes, I have Great. my resume. Do you have your resume ready? Yes. That's good. Do you have the questions that we came up with so you can ask Sophia? Yes. Okay, good. Make sure your tie is straightened and your blazer is straightened. Good job. All right, so good luck and call me once your interview is done. I want to hear all about it. Okay, sounds good. Good luck. Hello, Mobad. Hello. Thank you for coming to the virtual interview for the stock clerk position here at Sophia's Market. Sophia, the owner, will log on with you shortly for your interview. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good morning, Moba. Thank you for waiting. Uh, it is nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sophia. I am the owner here at, at Sophia's and I will be conducting the interview with you today. As you know, we are looking for a stock clerk here at Sophia's and that is a person that will work on our team um, to ensure that our customers have 
products available to them for purchase in a friendly and safe environment. <laughs> because of COVID-19, this also means packing groceries for customers that may prefer curbside pickup. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself and why you think you would be good for the job? Yes, I have nine years excellent customer service. I am ready on time. I'm flexible. I am on time when I, a customer need help. Even if I don't know, I will get information from my manager and then go back to the customer and tell the information. I'm very help, helpful. And I think I would be excellent, excellent candidate for this job by Sophia job. Wonderful. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your schedule? Are you more available in the mornings or the afternoon or the evening? Or do you have a preference? I could work from in the morning to eight o'clock because I have bus and accesses. Great. We could absolutely make that work. Could you also let me know a little bit about your work experience and maybe a time that you that you dealt with a difficult customer or a coworker? Yes, I work at Universal Student Hollywood. And one time the customer dropped her soda and she was so mad. And I told her, um, don't worry about it. Um, let me have your receipt. And I went to the restaurant. I got a brand new soda for her. I gave it to the customer. She was so happy and she put inside my pocket something. And she said, thank you so much. I'm wonderful working here. And they were excellent work. She told me I'm work, excellent worker. It sounds like you had a great rapport with the customer. That seems to be the end of my questions, but do you have any questions for me? Yes, I have three questions. Um, I want to know in a weekday, do we have a conference meeting or a staff meeting? So generally speaking, we have uh, staff meetings every week, but now uh, because of COVID-19, we do have some weeks where we meet twice a week because we have to go over some new safety precautions. So um, sometimes we have to be flexible, but generally speaking, there is at least a meeting once every week. Okay, and I wanted to know, do we have our, do we, what is the dress code? Do we have to buy our own clothes or the company buys it? So once you begin working, if you were to get the job on the first day of your, of your uh, training, we would provide you with the uniform. And my other thing is, since it's the corner 19, do we have masks and hand sanitizer for the store and temperatures? So, yes, um, indeed, we are following all of the COVID-19 safety precautions. That does include the, 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 um, the workers all do get their temperature checked in the morning before they start their shift or whenever they do start their shift as well as everybody needs to be wearing masks at all times. And if you are going to be touching any of the products, you will also be needing to wear gloves. Uh, and there's hand sanitizing stations all throughout the market and plexiglass stations at customer checkout. So you will be provided with a mask and gloves for your own protection. And my last question is, let's say if you work for five years or six years or seven years, do you have any the next level like challenge or not? So your performance will be evaluated uh, periodically, like we'll give you performance reviews. And depending on that, if, you, if you're an excellent worker and you do a really good job, there is absolutely a, a chance for growth as you as you proceed um, in in the in our company. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, 
and I hope I hear from you in 24 hours. Yes, I will absolutely get back to you within 24 hours um, with, with the decision, but it was very necessary. Thank you. So, um, so upon reflection, I, I, re I really think that both of these candidates are exceptionally qualified for a job here at the market. Um, in looking at the way they interviewed, they were both extremely positive. They were dressed professionally. Uh, they both seemed to express that they wanted to work as part of a team. Uh, Leonard was very uh, organized and his attention to detail seems very suited for a stock clerk position and Mobot uh, has strength in customer relation, relations and he seems very enthusiastic to be work, to work as a team so he'll be offered a similar uh, position as a checkout clerk. It is a win-win situation for all of us, I believe, if both of these individuals get offered the job. Hello, is this Leonard? Certainly is. Hi, Leonard. This is Sophia from Sophia's Market. How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, Leonard, I just wanted to let you know that we are going to be, um, we're pleased to be offering you a position here at the market. Um, you were just so positive and, and ready to be part of a team. Uh, and we were really looking forward to having you um, join us here. Well, I'm dynamitely pleased that you're telling me this great news. Incredibly dynamitely pleased. It's, Thank uh, you so much. Uh, we'll be in touch within the next day or so about your training schedule, and we'll get you all set up with the schedule and everything, and you'll get a, a uniform and everything you'll need to, to start working. All right. Well, Ms. Verga, thank you for spending quality time with me, and I really look forward to having a mutual employee-boss relationship with you for many, many, many years to come. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Leonard. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, is this Mobot? Yes. Hi, Sophia. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I was just calling to let you know that we are indeed going to be offering you a customer checkout position here at the market. Um, we just we're really pleased with your enthusiasm and your experience and customer relationships. Um, so uh, we'll be in touch with you within the next uh, two days or so with a training schedule and we'll get you all set up to start working, okay? Okay, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be on board. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week. We, we are really excited to have you as well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi. Well, that was a great video we just watched. Well, I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching this video. And our actors and actresses Jennifer Carpenter, the receptionist, Leonard Weiss, interviewee number one, Sophia Vergara, owner of Sophia's Market, Mobad Mularabi, interviewee number two. Sandra Hoagland as a job coach, and myself, Mark Anthony Campoy, temporarily playing as a captain. Well, thank you very much. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video that we just saw. It was uh, an example of what a virtual interview might look like during the current times during um, COVID-19. Um, so after this, we're going to go ahead and start with our PowerPoint presentation.
So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So hopefully you could see my, my screen okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, so again, thank you for, for, for coming to our presentation. Um, now we're going to take some time to talk about different types of virtual interview tips. Uh, so COVID-19 has brought upon many changes. Um, and for employment, it also has a lot of different changes. And if you're currently looking for a job, um, if you choose to work through the pandemic and you're, you're starting to, to do your job search, um, it's important to become familiar with virtual interviews. Um, and so for, for a virtual interview, um, so for the foreseeable future, many job interviews um, we think are going to be online. Um, and what is meant by a virtual presentation? So what do we mean by virtual presentation? Virtual presentation is a way that you visually present yourself to a potential employer. Um, and this tends to be like the biggest change during the current times, um, where in, uh, prior to COVID-19, you were probably meeting more in person. You were more likely to meet in person with an employer. Now you're more likely to, to meet online or remotely. Um, so some of the new details that you have to look out for when you are having a virtual interview are, for example, um, the position of the camera. You want to make sure that the camera is at a good angle so that the interviewer can see your, your, your face. Um, ideally, you would want to have your camera um, up from showing your, your face as the main focal point and from above the waist. Another thing that you want to pay attention to is, is lighting. Um, you want to make sure that your face um, is bright so that the interview can see your face. Um, so sometimes adding like, um, if you have like dark shadows coming from above or sometimes adding like a, a small light behind your computer can also help. Um, and you also wanna pay attention to the background. So when you select the angle of your camera, you wanna make sure that your background is presentable as well. And we'll talk a little bit more um, in the following slide. Um, another thing that is different is how do you talk to the camera? So talking to the camera is a little bit different than when you're talking to somebody in person. Uh, and honestly, if you haven't done it before, it can feel a little bit awkward. Um, I know it was for me when I started to do virtual presentations through, um, through Zoom. So you wanna make sure you practice. Um, practice looking into the camera's lens and this would show the potential employer um, that you're interested in, in the job. Um, another thing that you want to do is also nod and smile when communicating. Um, since you can't physically be there, it helps to communicate to the person that's asking you questions that you are following along with what they're saying uh, and that you're paying attention. So again, you want to be able to have like a good virtual presentation. You also want to establish a professional setting. So um, how do you establish a professional setting when you're, when you're at home, right? Um, um, you want to make sure that you select a clean and uncluttered background, and you want to avoid virtual backgrounds if possible. Um, but understandably, if, if you would prefer to use a virtual background for an interview, you want to make sure that you select one that's appropriate, um, something that's maybe neutral and professional looking. Um, if you choose not to have a virtual background, sometimes having like a plain wall behind you um, is helpful um, or having like an office like setting if, if you have one. Um, again, you want it's all about making like a good first impression to the employer. Um, if you have pets, um, you want to make sure that maybe there's somebody in your home that's able to watch them while you do your interview. You want to have at least um, the least amount of distractions as possible. Um, you want to choose a location for your interview that is peaceful, quiet, and distraction-free. Um, if, you, if you live at home with more people, um, you want to maybe let them know ahead of time, like, hey, I'm going to have an interview at this time on this date so that they know that um, they're aware of that you're having this interview and they're able to not make maybe as much noise if possible. Um, again, you wanna try your best to avoid anything that may distract the interviewer or anything that might distract you from the questions that are being asked during the interview. Um, so that's how you would be able to establish a professional setting. 
Another thing to look out for is dressing for the interview. Um, so a virtual interview should be approached in the same manner as an in-person interview. You want to make sure that you dress professionally from head to toe in case you need to stand up. You never know what can happen during an interview and you, you may need to stand up for whichever reason. Maybe you need to go grab a, a drink of water or some papers. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are dressed fully from head to toe, just as you would during a typical interview when you were to go to meet somebody at their office or in person. Um, another tip is that you want to research the company to become familiar with their dress code. Um, so nowadays, different companies have different types of work culture um, and dress codes. So you want to be able to know uh, the, um, the employer that you're interviewing for. Another thing is you want to choose clothes that make you feel comfortable and confident. So that's really important. You need to be comfortable and confident in the clothes that you're wearing um, to avoid in the interview, you know, uh, tugging down on your shirt or your collar. Uh, make sure that you're comfortable in the clothes that you're wearing. Um, if you are receiving services from one of our employment service providers, they, they are able to provide support with this area as well uh, to help you prepare for that interview. Um, some examples are, for example, for casual workplaces, professional looking casual job interview attire is appropriate. Um, what does this mean? So this can mean like anything from like dark jeans, a blouse and a cardigan, um, a button down shirt or a polo. For a more of a business casual environment, you'll need to dress up a bit more, which can mean, for example, maybe dress pants or a dress skirt, a button down shirt, um, cardigan jackets, or maybe even a blazer. For more formal workplaces, they typically require more formal attire. So that can mean um, having like a tailored dress or pantsuit with matching jacket, matching pants or matching skirt, um, a button down shirt and perhaps even a tie. When in doubt, um, what we always like to say, if you're not sure about the work culture of the job that you're interviewing, when in doubt, um, dressing formally is always the safe way to go. Um, because again, the interview is a chance for you to make a good first impression on your potential employer so that they could um, be likely to hire you. Um, another thing with um, COVID-19 is this is new. So you want to check your technology. Um, it may feel like the internet connection is maybe out of your control, but perhaps there's steps that you can do um, to be able to ensure that you have the best connection possible. Um, so you want to check your internet connection. Frozen screens and drop calls are the quickest way to lose on an interview opportunity. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, before the interview starts, you want to maybe disconnect other devices from your internet um, and cancel other windows on your laptop if you're using a laptop. Uh, this would help you avoid um, having um, connection like issues. You want to make sure you plug in your cords. Again, if you're using a computer or a laptop, you want to make sure you plug directly um, because if you are using technology such as like like virtual platforms like Zoom, uh, they do take up a lot of power um, when you're doing like a, a virtual presentation. Um, so you also want to make sure that if possible, a thing that you can also do if you're using a computer or a laptop is connect them to the Ethernet cable that sends signals directly to your computer rather than via over the air transmission. Um, again, this helps you have that stronger bandwidth and helps you have that stronger internet connection. Um, and a tip that we have, if you are having a virtual interview coming up, we encourage you to talk to your circle of support for assistance with creating a plan um, that works best for you and for the electronic device that you'll be utilizing. You wanna make sure you do, you have advanced planning. Um, so take the time to prepare for your interview in advance. In most cases, everything will go smoothly, but it will be a lot less stressful um, if you practice in advance. So you want to do a trial run a day or two before the interview. You know, reach out to your friends, to your family, to your circle of support, and just do a test run. Do a test run of how you're going to look into the camera. Do a test run of the, the actual technology that you're using. 
um, you want to test like your webcam. Uh, if you are using any headsets or microphones, you want to use the uh, exact ones that are, you're planning to use for the interview. Um, again, it's about creating that environment where you're able to practice and do an actual trial so that you are able to be ready for your interview. You also want to um, practice interview questions. So when you reach out to your circle of support team, you want to practice in potential interview questions like the ones that you saw during the, the video that we just showed. You want to practice these questions um, so that you're ready for your actual interview. Um, a tip that I like to do is you, um, if you stand in front of a mirror um, and talk to the mirror and practice your questions, it, it sometimes helps because it makes you feel aware of how you are um, responding to the questions and it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable with answering questions. Um, another thing is um, you could also record yourself um, and then watch it later to see how you are presenting yourself virtually. Um, it's, it's a good tip to, to use as well. During the actual, um, during the video interview, so you want to avoid background noise. Um, as mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you have the least distractions as possible because your goal in the interview is to be able to make a good impression and be able to connect with that employer. Um, you want to you know, make a good impression. You want to avoid maybe making a lot of hand gestures, which I'm guilty of doing sometimes, um, but you want to try your best to avoid maybe a lot of hand gestures because sometimes even with great internet connection, um, if there is a lag in the times, it might look like um, there's a lot of stutter on the screen. So you want to avoid that if possible too. Um, it's a very important to make eye contact and remember that that means in this case for the virtual interview, that means looking directly into the camera um, rather than the image of yourself that's probably next to a little window that you're, you're, you're seeing. Um, and again, I know that's a little bit awkward, especially if you haven't done it before. So practice, 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 practice looking into the camera, practice being comfortable with the technology that you're utilizing. Um, if your internet, you know, if you tried everything and at the end of your internet connection perhaps starts having a hard time, which may happen um, because with technology, you never know, right? So if in the case that you are in your interview and you notice that um, there's like a, a bad connection with your internet, you want to ask the interviewer, uh, the employer, if you are able to turn off your camera. Sometimes if you turn off your camera, uh, this allows you to be heard more clearly and it helps with the bandwidth of, of your computer and the internet. So in the event that that happens, um, please know that that's a possibility as well. Um, and we're sure that the employer would be open to that because um, the employer's goal in an interview is to be able to connect with you and kind of identify that you're going to be a good fit for their work culture and for the job. Um, another tip is, uh, the microphone might pick up a lot of noise in the room. So you want to try your best to avoid additional no's, like maybe like shuffling papers around or tapping your, your pen. Um, again, you want the focus to be on, on you. Um, so th these are some tips that you can do when um, you're in the actual interview. Um, the video interview process. So other than not meeting the interviewer in person, the interview process will be the same as an in-person interview. There typically will be about 10 to 15 questions related to the job the company is hiring for. So do your best to reference the skills you practice in other places. Make sure that you highlight those. Um, you want to be prepared to ask questions as well because it shows that you are interested in the job. Um, so with, again, with your circle of support team, um, be able to help identify questions ahead of time that you're able to ask from the employer. Um, the interview's objective is to screen the candidate for, for their job. Um, so, um, so also you want to thank, thank the interviewer for the time and ask for their contact information so that you may send a follow-up thank you letter for their time. So that's really important because it, it also shows that you are um, serious about the job. 
um, and that you take the additional extra step to be able to send them a thank you letter for their time. Um, so the, the value for yourself as well as for the hiring manager is equivalent and interviewing successfully, however it takes place, is the key to getting hired. So your job application already did its job. You're in the interview process. Now it's your time to be able to sell yourself for, for the employer. Um, but also remember that you are interviewing the employer as well. And you want to make sure that they're a good fit for you, um, as well as you're a good fit for them to be able to have a successful employment. Um, and we leave you with this quote. Sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. So if you do choose to look for employment during the current pandemic, um, do know that it is going to look uh, different than what is typical of a work environment. Um, it's going to most likely be different at the job that you go to and the process for hiring is most likely going to be different as well. And there's going to be a lot more virtual interaction. Um, um, however, the interview is still one of the most important elements of getting hired. Um, so, so don't get discouraged. You know, just go ahead and practice, practice, practice before your interview. Um, practice so that you feel comfortable with your technology. Um, and uh, like I said before, remember that the, the company role is to be able to identify if you were be, are going to be a good match for them, but you also want to identify if the job is going to be a good match for you, um, because that would help create a successful um, employment and a successful career when, when both sides are, are consistent and matching. Um, and next week, we're going to talk about the one page profile. Uh, which is a tool that can be used to get to know yourself a little bit better. And we'll talk about how you can utilize this tool for your employment job search during the current um, pandemic. Um, so with that said, we're going to open it up to questions from the audience. Um, so again, a reminder is um, type up any questions in the Q&A box. Um, or you can also raise your hand if you have any questions and we'll call on you. Um, so Megan, Rhiannon, are there any questions in the Q&A box? We don't yet have any questions from the audience, but um, I, I've come up with a few just for discussion purposes for all the panelists that we can use while we're waiting to see if anyone in the audience has anything they wanted to ask. Um, so one thing I noticed in the video was that there was an assistant who was logging on to introduce the potential candidate to the owner of the business. Um, what, what happens, how should someone prepare for that situation or how should they prepare if they are to log on and right away they're with the person who's gonna interview with them? Is there tips on what you can kind of suggest to the potential participants in the interview as to how they could prepare for those different types of scenarios? Well, they can uh, role play with their circle of support. That way, if that scenario does happen, it'll be less of a shock and they'll be ready. I think that's a great tip. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, even the littlest things that we're not expecting can throw us off in an interview. So maybe practicing those different scenarios of I'm going to log on and it's the person who's interviewing me or I'm going to log on and it's maybe someone who's going to introduce me to the person who's interviewing me. So great tip, Mark. I think, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, one qu another question we thought about is how early should someone log in for their virtual interview? Mm, that is a great question. I mean, I would say about maybe five minutes in my opinion, but prior to that, they should be tech checking on their technology and making sure it's working. Like a good example, if they're on a laptop, make sure the Wi-Fi is hooked up, connect, you know, hooked up. Or if they're really, or they can have the ethernet cable directly plugged into the laptop, they have that as well, you know, just to make sure everything's ready to go. In addition to that, if you're using your smartphone, make sure they have a, you know, fully charged or plugged into the wall and go from there. Yeah. Um, okay. I would just add a point to that, sorry. Um, just because the way that Zoom is, the way you know, if they're using Zoom or they're using some kind of account, they may already be meeting with somebody else or not be prepared for you uh, if you log in too early. So I agree with you, Mark. I think as soon as you wanna log in, 
is five minutes early uh, in case the, the it, it, you're actually a surprise to the interviewer instead because they weren't expecting you at that time. So um, normally in person, you, you show up probably 10, 15 minutes early just to, to show that you're ready and on time. But in this case, you know, no more than five minutes is, is probably preferred. So I just wanted to add that just in case. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that makes sense. Liddy, did you have something else you wanted to contribute? Yeah, um, no, that makes sense. And I wanted to add to, I think I might have forgotten to mention, is you you want to make sure that you have, um, like somewhere written down uh, the login information, because in the event that you do log in and things happen, you know, in the event that you get kicked off uh, because of your internet connection, you want to make sure that you have that if it is like a Zoom uh, video conference um, meeting, you want to make sure you have that login with you. Um, so sometimes what I do, I'll, I'll take a picture of it and have it next to me, or I write it down in a, in a piece of paper. Um, and that way you avoid having to go back into your, your files and finding that information and making it a little bit more smoother, even though there was like the little hiccup, it helps, it does help. Um, but I agree, yeah, maybe in this case, like five minutes before, um, you want to be ready to go. <laughs> Good question. All right. Good, great question. Yeah. Um, so another question that has come in from the audience, Christian asks, any tips on what to add in a thank you letter after the virtual interview? Is there, how, how, how would someone know what to add in their thank you letter? Well, if you're, you, you can be pretty slick about one thing. You could add, um, you can thank them for the job interview. And if you felt a question wasn't asked during a job interview, you can ask, you can, um, state the question and give an answer. Uh, you know, a good example would be like, well, you know, notes in the job and you, you didn't really ask, uh, or it wasn't asked, hey, what are we do in a crisis situation? You can pose a question and give an answer. That way you try to increase your possibility of getting hired, you know. Any other tips from the panelists on follow-up uh, letters? Yeah, um, no, that's a good point, Mark. Um, and also sometimes just, just thanking them for their time. Um, sometimes uh, remember the people that you are interviewing you selected you and chose you for a reason. So they believe in you. Um, and a lot of times they are, you know, extremely busy. So you just taking that extra step to acknowledge, you know, thank you for your time. Together took to your hearing that would be um i think we're having one of those moments where technology is is uh freezing a little bit the the, the way that it might in a virtual interview yeah. so <laughs> a perfect example of sometimes the challenges of working with zoom but i think we got most of what you said liddy mm -hmm. um just yeah making sure to thank perfect them for their time example. sorry yeah it's i mean this is what it is right now right so um, yeah. Okay, so another question. Um, can, I add, is, can I add to that little oh, moment? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when, when something like that happens, I think how you played it was perfectly, you know, make light of the situation. You know, that way, you know, you might make the interviewer chuckle. You know, they might not pay attention to that moment if you made them laugh. So, you know, that kind of just smoothens that little, you know, issue and you could keep your interview going and, you know, hopefully it leads to a positive result. Thank you. That's a, that's a really good point. Cause so know that stuff like this might and will happen. <laughs> um, and know that everyone, the way that I like to think about it is everyone, we're all living in this moment together. Uh, during this time, we're all, doesn't matter where you live, everybody's going through the pandemic through COVID-19 during this time. So I'm sure that the employer will be understanding, like Ben said, if you make light of the situation, um, I'm sure there will be understanding of that. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Because um, it is easy to get nervous in those situations, but if you just have a carefree attitude, that you know that confidence will show your employer that you can handle these kinds of situations. So another question is: Is there a preference um, or you know a, a benefit for a potential candidate to sit or stand during their virtual interview? Um, we wouldn't normally think about this, but I don't know if there's a preference either way. It's up to the person. I mean, a good example would be like uh, in in the interview, Leonard, Mr. Leonard Weiss was standing, as you can see, versus a uh, Moab Malarabi was sitting. You know, so it just depends on what makes you comfortable and what's going to give you the highest like 
vibe to get that job. You know? Whatever makes you feel the most confident in your ability, maybe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point, Mark. Whatever feels comfortable. Um, and you also want to be able to um, to be comfortable. It's important. And for the interviewer to be able to see your face, um, like at least maybe like you're from the waist up. Um, and that way they can focus on more of your, your facial features, expressions. Um, but it is very important to, to feel comfortable. Um, yeah. I feel that it's important to wear a full interview attire because you just never know you know you never know uh, somebody might knock on your door you might have to get up and uh, answer it or you know you never know what can happen you don't want to be those people that just dress half to the top right you want to dress fully i think that'll help you be more comfortable that'll give you the confidence you need um and in general i think with um virtual interviewing it, it helps in just allowing you to be more comfortable you know, myself, you know, I know interviews make me nervous, but I've noticed that in the virtual world, I'm a little more comfortable. Um, and that kind of allows me to answer questions easier. You know, I'm able to speak more legibly. You know, I don't rush through an answer. It allows me to think. And like right now, even though you can just see from here up, I'm wearing my full interview attire with dress shoes. So please don't make fun of me, but I'm, I'm fully <laughs> dressed. And I recommend to always do that. Just It just adds to the experience. Yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah, very uh, good tip. Totally agree with that. Yeah, nothing wrong with splashing some um, cologne or perfume, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> Whatever makes right you now, feel a, confident. <laughs> yeah, like right now I'm wearing uh, Calvin Klein uh, Eternity, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another question. Um, if I know my internet is not great, should I let my employer know ahead of time, my potential employer? Mm -hmm. So if you know your connection's a little unstable, should you let the person know? I mean, you should, and they might have that option where basically you could be a call, you can call in as well, you know. Yeah, so if you have that conversation, if you start the interview off and it seems like you're, your connection's shaky, um, they might even offer you the opportunity to just call instead of using the video technology. So good point, yeah. Um, you might switch the way the interviews take place, okay. And then um, would, would what would the panelists think about um, logging into a virtual interview, either like from a place outside or a place in public. Look for a blank wall. That's true, what we want. If you had to, if you had to be outdoors, okay. find something that's clear. Or even inside your own, even inside a car would be, would suffice as well, because it shows you're very serious, you know. Mm -hmm. so you never know when it might happen, even though like it could be spontaneous and they know that you're not fully dressed for it, you know, you do your best. I think that's something that's going to complicate things. Um, but if you're in that situation, I think the best thing you could do is just mute yourself at all times um, mm -hmm. because you don't know the background noise or whatever. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're muted and only unmute when you have to answer. Uh, that way you minimize the background noise. You never know somebody, you might be at a Starbucks and somebody drops their tumbler or something, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think depending on where you are, no matter what, just always be muted until you answer. That's a good idea. Yeah, those are great ideas. Um, I think ideally, um, if you know ahead of time, you want to prepare. If, if, you, if you knew like a few days ahead of time that we're having this interview, um, you want to do your best to prepare to hopefully be somewhere inside in an environment that you can control. Because like Ben and Mark were saying, is the microphone picks up a lot of noise. And I've noticed when uh, people are outside, you hear like, um, like where I live, there's a lot of airplanes. <laughs> so you can hear all the airplanes and you wouldn't be able to hear me. Um, so do your best if you can to go somewhere in an environment that you can control. If you get like a last minute interview, because um, those happen too, like, you know, can we talk to you at 2 p.m. and it's like 1 p.m., um, then yeah, I agree. Like, do your best to, like Mark, uh, Ben was saying, mute yourself and avoid. And I'm sure in those cases, the interview, the interview that's the person that's interviewing might know because they did it last minute. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if it's very last minute, you might not be able to respond. So they might be a little more forgiving with your environment. Right. So we do have a question from Cynthia. Um, in the event that the applicant is no longer interested in a job that has already been offered and accepted, so if somebody changes their mind after they've accepted a position, 
what steps should the applicant take to inform the company or employer? Oh, well, it's happened. Well, it hasn't happened with me, but I, it's happened in my old job before where someone went through an interview and they changed their mind. And the first thing they should do is the person they're interviewing with, they should inform them immediately. Because what happens in the background is that human resources puts a lot of time and effort to put these interviews together. And just at the last minute to fall up, you know, it's not a good fit for them, it's something different. So as soon as possible. Any other suggestions from the panelists? I think what Mark said is, is, is what you should do. Um, I think uh, your preparation and what you send is very important because you never know what if you want to apply at this place again, right? And you do want to accept the position at some point. So you want to leave it open-ended to where, you know, you don't want to sour, you know, the opportunity, but that, hey, this person is still interested. If things don't work out, you never know, you know, we'll reach out to you again. So I think what you prepare is very important. So um, you would need to take a lot of time to prepare something like that. Um, but I agree with Mark as well. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe when you're drafting a letter, you know, thanking them again for the opportunity, but something has changed and, you know, I'm not able to move forward, you know, just making sure that it's a professional um, interaction with the, the employer. So like Ben said, you don't have the, the relationship you know, uh, in a bad place when you leave that connection. So that's a great question, Cynthia. Th thanks for asking that. Um, another question I was thinking about is sometimes it's really hard over Zoom to know when the other person's going to stop talking. So are there any tips uh, when you're doing a virtual interview um, on what someone can do to know that it's their turn to talk? Oh, okay. Like give a five second pause count the five in your head and then see what happens next. Yeah, it's a good tip. I think uh, that's just one of the challenge, again, one of the challenges of the virtual environment. Yeah, Lydia, it seems like maybe you have an idea as well. Yeah, no, that's a good tip, Mark. Um, it, it does, um, and it happens to me a lot too, um, because it is, it's just, it's a challenge, it's, it's a different environment. Um, when you're in person, you're able to see the person's like visual cues, right? You're able to see like their body language and you kind of tell a little bit more. When it's virtual, all you're seeing is mostly the person's face. And um, I don't know, I think for that, I think the suggestion would be to, before you start the interview, ask um, the person that's interviewing how, how they would like to proceed, like with questions, um, what they recommend. Because depending on who you're talking to, they're, it's maybe going to be a different, like speed or different expectations. So typically from what I understand from virtual interviews is that the employee, the person that's interviewing you will let you know ahead of time um, or should let you know ahead of time, like what the expectations will be for the process. Um, but always asking those questions before could be helpful and avoid some of those awkward situations too. Yeah, cause like typically like um, when you're doing a face-to-face -face back in the olden days, um, a lot of people, they would use a thing called turn-based conversation where basically it, when, the way it works, every person has a different um, speed limit of when they talk and when they stop. And it's much easier to, you know, figure out. But in the virtual world, you're right. You're like, no, wait a second. It's a little bit more different because you're not there. You're not sensing that person, you know? Yeah. I was just going to add, I thought what you actually did, Megan, to know that Liddy was wanting to speak and maybe even with some of the others on on virtual or on Zoom is that maybe if they go from being unmuted, uh, from being muted to unmuting themselves, or if, you know, I ask you a question, I'm the employer, and then maybe, you know, I turn myself on mute, it, it might be an indication that, you know, that obviously they're done speaking. So you could even maybe model that yourself as an interviewee. And when you're done answering the question, just so they know you're done talking, yourself put yourself on mute and then that kind of is a a visual indication that hopefully as long as you meant to do that that you're you're kind of done with what you wanted to say so i would just add that in there as a tip as well that's a great suggestion that's a good and that's a visual cue as well um another thing i was thinking about is simply just maybe practicing on zoom uh when you're doing your practice with your circle of support um when you're thinking about doing your you know pre-interview prep 
um, maybe trying it out over Zoom just so that you can kind of get used to the feeling of interviewing over Zoom because it is different doing it in person than it is over Zoom. So maybe that would be another way to kind of get the feeling of what it's like. So um, I wanted to just one, one more time remind everyone in the audience that we'd be happy to take any other questions you have. You can enter it into the Q&A box or you can use the raise hand feature. We'll give it just a couple more seconds. Um, I think we've asked a lot of really great questions and had a good conversation. But if there's any lingering questions before we close today, um, just want to give a little bit of extra time. Um, any other tips from the panelists while we're waiting just to see before we wrap things up? Can I add um, the previous question? Um, I actually saw Liddy's mic become unmuted and I still spoke. So, you know, I want to apologize, Liddy. Um, for interrupting. Sometimes that's all it takes. You know, I, I'm the type of person that, you know, I get very excited sometimes. So I tend to interrupt, especially through Zoom. But what I do is I apologize. Uh, I'll, I'll say, you know, hey, I'm sorry for the interruption. Um, and, and I'll just blurt out an answer, right? But you might get excited during an interview and blurt out an answer too. You know, so you just, as long as you're polite about it, um, I wasn't polite about it right now. So I apologize, Liddy. But it's going to happen because, you know, as an in, as an interviewee, you're going to get excited. So I think it's worth more um, if you interrupt with good information as opposed to if you're just sitting there and don't answer and there's a delay. So, you know, there's room for, for everybody. Um, so, yeah. No, that's a really good point, Ben. Um, emotions, right? You get nervous in an interview. I know I get nervous in an interview. You get excited. Now there's this extra, you know, addition. There's like this virtual world. Um, and sometimes, even though somebody unmutes their microphone, it's really tiny, so you might not see it. Um, or I believe people are in different boxes, like different uh, like positions, depending on your, your right. Like it's not not everybody has the same. Um, what do you call it? Um, like um, scene, right? Or, or the same. Their, like, their visual is different depending on yeah. how someone has chosen. Yeah, they can be looking at all the boxes or the speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might look a little bit different. Yeah, the, the visual, thank you. The visual is different. So um, yeah, thank you, Ben, no worries. <laughs> That's a good point too. So I'm not seeing any further questions. So Lydia, I guess I'll turn it back over to you to finish wrapping up if there's any other comments from the rest of the panelists and then uh, we can say our goodbyes. Okay, thank you, Megan. Um, well, if there's no further questions. Uh, this will be like the end of our presentation. But um, please join us for next Wednesday. So next Wednesday at 10 a.m., we're going to have our final webinar for this month. Um, and it's going to be about, about one page um, person, one page profiles for the employment job search. Um, and this would give you an opportunity to learn more about yourself and how to utilize what works for you, what doesn't work for you, how to utilize that to your advantage. Uh, so please join, join us for next week. Um, I want to thank you to all of the panelists, um, uh, to Ben, to Mark, uh, Sophia, she couldn't be here today because uh, she had to work, um, to all the, the, the people in the video, um, to ECF for doing the video and their staff. Um, thank you so much for all of your support with that and for doing um, a very nice video. Um, and yeah, thank you all for your time. Um, does anybody else have any comments that they would like to say before we sign off? So I have one. So I would recommend every single person in the audience always practice conducting an information interview because in the end, once you know what type of job or career you're looking for, and then you have that actual interview and ask, they ask you, do you have any questions you would like to ask us? Because you've conducted an information interview and become an expert, it would be a lot easier to do that. Great closing tip for our session today. Thanks for that, Mark. Okay, thank you, Mark. That was great. Um, okay, well, thank you everybody in the audience. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, see you next time. Bye.